Hi guys, today we're going to cover the lecture 18, which is a continuous lecture about the separation of variables. So in last lecture, we have talked about the separation of variables in Cartesian coordinates, because if you remember in the previous uh, problems or examples, um, the boundaries are all on planes. So using Cartesian coordinates were uh, more appropriate in previous examples. Today, in, uh, in, in next examples, we're going to discuss some round objects or spherical objects. So spherical coordinates becomes more neutral. Um, so first of all, if we rewrite the Laplace equation into spherical um, system, it becomes in this equation, 3.53. And let's suppose the problem has um, azimuthal symmetry. So V should be independent of phi. So partial V over partial phi should be zero. Then the entire term uh, will be zero for this term. So your Laplace equation becomes this term. Um, <clears throat> as before, we can, let's see, we can um, look for the solutions which produces the potential equals to two, the products of two functions. One function is, is a function of radius, the other one is a function of theta. And then we can put this equation uh, back into uh, 3.54, and then you will get uh, some other terms of the equation, and then you use this equation to divide by to be divided by uh, v or r times theta, and then you will get a function of this. So this is something similar to previous um, equations in condition situation. Now you will get uh, two terms of those equations. So this term is a function. Let's say this term is only uh, a term including um, r. And this term is a term depends on theta. So R and theta, they're independent from each other. So you can consider this part to be a function of R and this part to be a function of theta. And theta and R, they're completely independent. And in this case, if this function plus the other function, it always equals to zero, what does that mean? That means, this function or this left term should be a constant and here it should be another constant. So those two constants, the sum of those two constants equals to zero. That means one constant should be a positive value and another constant is a negative value. And then we can write the left term to be a constant of k and then this term to be a constant of negative k. And that's the situation in Cartesian coordinates. However, in this case, let's write the constant to be uh, more complicated or a fancier way. Let's write the constant to be l times l plus one. And um, the other constant, of course, will be negative l times l plus one. And we will see why we write this constant to be um, more complicated than just a K or something. Because when you write the equations in this, in, in this way, and um, the L will play a role in the solution. So, um, now the separation of variables has converted a partial differential equation into ordinary differential equation. 
um, as shown here and here. First of all, for for this equation, we can write it into this term. And this equation has a general solution, which is r equals to a r power l plus b over r to l plus one. And a and b are uh, arbitrary constants to be expected in the solution of a second order differential equation. But the angular equation here is uh, not simple. The solution, is, the solutions are legendary polynomials in the variable cosine of cosine theta, which is um, PL cosine theta. And then PL is most conveniently defined by the uh, Rodriguez formula, which is shown here. And it's a very complicated formula. Uh, you can see um, PL x equals to uh, this equation. And the first uh, legendary polynomials are listed in this table. And of course, you can uh, write the um, legendary polynomials for more terms like P6, P7, by just putting integer numbers into PLX. And you will get more and more terms. And then notice that uh, the, um, let's see. Okay, notice that the PL is an L's order polynomial in, in X. It contains only even powers if L is even. And it contains odd powers if L is odd. So the factor in front of, in front, which is one over two to power L times L, um, and then the factor was chosen in order that p l one equals to one, and this formula obviously work works only for connect um, non-negative integer values of l, and um, it provides us with only one solution. But in previous equation three. 60 in this equation. Uh, <clears throat> it's a second order and it should uh, process two independent solutions for every value of L. So it turns out that the other solutions blows up at um, theta equals to zero and or theta equals to pi. And are therefore unacceptable on physical ground. For instance, the second solution for L is um, theta equals to log um, tangent uh, theta over two. And you, you can check by yourself, um, this satisfies the uh, equation 3.60. In the case of uh, the mutual symmetry, then the most general um, separable solution to Laplace equation, the consistent with minimal physical requirement is shown here. Um, and as before, the separation of variables yield an infinite set of solutions, one for each L, the general solution for the linear combination of the separation of the separable solutions could be written in this format. V equals to um, the sum of this term times this term. And it seems like a very complicated. Um, the most difficult part is, um, let's see, from 
this equation, you can get a general solution uh, for uh, for R, which is shown which is shown here. So it needs you some background of um, such equations. So if you don't have such background, it's difficult for you to understand why the solution of such an equation equals to um, equals to uh, is or or the solutions of these equations are described in in this format. Um, so if you don't have such background, you can do some Google search to search the keyword of uh, those two polynomials or formulas, the Legendre polynomials and um, Rodriguez formulas, and then you may get better ideas. Or go back to your calculators, you will see why those uh, solutions satisfy those equations. That's the key for such a uh, spherical problem. You can, if you can understand the solutions for this equation and this equation, um, um, oh, sorry. If you can understand the solutions for this equation and the, this equations easily, then you don't have any problems um, to have to to uh, study this section, the Sofrico solutions uh, for <coughs> for uh, examples such as three point six. So now let's see three point six. First, um, the potential V zero theta is specified on the surface of hollow sphere of radius R. Find the potential inside the sphere. Okay, now you have a sphere and the potential on the sphere, on the surface of sphere is always uh, V zero. But that's a function of theta. Let's say in a uh, okay. Let's see in a spherical coordinates. Let's see. This is theta, and the potential on the surface. It's a function of theta. It's not constant then how to calculate the potential inside the sphere. In this case, first, um, we can um, get the solution which is shown here for the potential. Because uh, if we decide to use spherical coordinates, then the solution of potential could be written in this format. And the rest of the things are just determining uh, all the constant like a and b. So first of all, in this case, uh, b l equal to zero for all l. Otherwise, the potential could blow up at the origin because um, for r, it should for r. In this case, um, even R equal to zero, which means at the center of the sphere, you should have some potentials. So R could be zero in this case. But in this term, if R is zero, then um, this term becomes infinite, then it blows up. So this term should be um, zero or B should be zero. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't make sense because when r equals to zero here, it blows up. So b is zero. Now we can easily determine the value of b l. It's zero for all l. Otherwise, the potential would blow up at, at the origin or center of the um, sphere. Then your equation of the, your general equation um, or general solution of the spherical potential could be written uh, easier because you don't have B anymore, then now you only have A terms, then it could be written in this term. And then 
when our echoes to um, the readers of the uh, sphere, it must match the specified function v0 theta. So if r equals to r, then let's put, let's substitute the r by the capital R, it equals to v theta. And can this equation be satisfied for an appropriate choice of coefficient al? Yes, the legendary polynomial constitute a complete set of functions on the inter interval um, when theta is from zero to pi. And how do we determine the constants? Again, by Fourier trick, the legendary polynomials are also good functions, which could be um, written in this format. If you do a interval integral from negative one to one uh, or from zero to pi for, for this function, then it equals to either zero or this term. When uh, L prime doesn't equal to L, it equals to zero. Otherwise it equals to uh, this term. And then multiplying this equation by uh, P L prime cosine theta times sine theta, and then uh, do the uh, integrating, we have this equation or this, this equation. And then um, the equation is a solution to our problem with coefficient by by the equation shown here. It can be difficult to evaluate the integrals of the form 3.69 analytically and in practice, it is often easier to solve um, equation 3.67. For instance, suppose we're told that the potential on the sphere is, um, is in this equation where k is a constant using the half angle formula, we rewrite this as V not theta equals to um, this term and putting this term, uh, putting the e previous equation, uh, putting this into the previous equation and then we read off immediately after A zero equal to K over two, A one equals to negative K over two R and all others for, and all others ALs vanish, therefore you can write it into this format. So that's the solution for the first example. You can see it's a very complicated for solving spherical uh, coordinates problems because it needs a lot of spherical knowledge meant uh, when you uh, solve such a problem. If you feel, difficult to understand um, those equations, you need to go back to your calculators to see the um, spherical coordinates. Um, but in our class, in our course, uh, we will not take this as your um, focus in this um, electromagnetic class because there are too many uh, equations or mathematical equations. Uh, sometimes I feel in this section, the mathematics is much more than the physics itself. So I feel sometimes you might be confused by mostly by mathematics, not by the physics. So please try to understand uh, the theories here by, by reading the textbook for the rest of the examples in this section, which is example 3.7, 3.8, and 3.9. Those will help you, will help you to understand um, the spherical um, coordinates uh, 
to solve such, um, let's say, spherical distribution of the uh, potentials. It's it's complicated. It's uh, I know it's uh, difficult, um, but please try to understand it. But in our homeworks and our exams, um, we're not going to uh, take any of the spherical uh, potential solutions or anything similar to these examples in, in our um, exams or homeworks. So please read the textbook, try to understand it. If you feel even you spend a long time and you still cannot understand, it's okay. We're not going to put it into the homeworks and exams. Okay, so that's all for today's lecture. We have finished the separation of variables. Um, I'll see you in next time. Bye.